Howdy gang, Trailblazer Tim here. Happy 4th of July to everyone. While everyone's out having the barbecues and partying and on the beach and stuff, I'm getting away from all that stuff and heading out to one of my favorite little bug out spots. So I'll catch up to you when we get there. Man, it is cooking out here, 4th of July. Like I said, everybody's out having their barbecues and boating and hanging out on the beach. Man, I'm looking for the furthest place away from all that. So I'm heading out to one of my favorite little bug out spots. I'll catch up to you when we get there. Folks, one of my favorite places, the Cameron Trail Shelter, out here on the south end of the Malabar Scrub Sanctuary. I seem to do a whole lot of hiking out in this area because there's so many trails. And the reason why I come out hiking as hot as it is, because the chances of seeing other hikers and people are slim to none. And slim just left them last train out of town. <laughs> Time to get something to drink. Not a long walk out here, but it's enough to scare up a mighty thirst. Oh yes. Ah, very tasty. All right, so on today's adventure, I've seen it done a few times. I've seen a lot of guys use it before and always wondered how the heck did they make that? Today we're going to attempt for the first time, I've never tried this, this is no practice run or anything. I'll try to show you how to make char cloth as a fire starter so you can take with you to make a fire in the wild. Char Claw is a fire accelerant that is made for years. You know, they mastered it a long time ago. A couple quick tips that I've learned along the way if you're going to try to attempt to make char cloth is you have to have a 100% plant-based cloth of some sort. So it is a chili cloth, denim, canvas. In this case, we're gonna use a 100% cotton old t-shirt. Let's start by doing that. All right, let's pull the old t-shirt out. And First thing we want to look at is our little label here. I'll pull this down, I don't know if you can see this or not. It says right there, 100% cotton. All right, so we're gonna take this old t-shirt and this is 100% cotton. It doesn't have any fabric softener or anything. It's been laying around in the drawer for a long time. We're gonna cut ourselves a little square of this stuff. Now, technically speaking, most guys, when they make this char cloth, they like to use a little Altoid tin. I wanna keep my Altoid tin good. So in this case, what I bought is a larger tin that I used to have tea bags in, and this is what we're gonna to use to make our char cloth. Now, ideally speaking, when you're gonna make char cloth, uh, they recommend usually you build a fire and you put your tin on top of the coals and stuff. You know what? It's 95 degrees out here. I ain't starting no fire and plus you're not supposed to have open fires here. So let's go ahead and open our tin up. First rule of thumb is I got a pair of gloves because this tin is going to get hot. I got my little pocket stove. All right. I'll show you something like that. So this is going to be our little tin right here that is going to cook our char cloth. Let's go ahead and I'll show you how to set this up. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get our cloth ready. I brought a pair of scissors with me with my pack and stuff. And I'm gonna cut myself probably a two by two or a four by four piece of cloth. I don't know if you can see that or not. Watch carefully. Sorry, old t-shirt. We had a lot of memories, but now it's on to other things, I guess. Cut this up through here. Something kind of like that. See that? It's got kind of a seam on it, so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to get rid of the seam as well. We're just going to work with the t-shirt, which remember is 100% cotton. You don't want to have any acrylics or any kind of polyesters or anything in there because it will set this 
to nothing. You will not be able to use this as a fire starter or accelerant if it has anything less than 100% plant-based fabric. Now that we have our piece like this, I'm going to take my little tin. I'm going to loosely just kind of lay it down inside the tin. See that? It's, it's just kind of loosely down here in the tin. Kind of spread it out as good as we can. Kind of like that. All right. Next, I'm going to take our lid and I'm going to pop the lid on there nice and tight. Now, the key from what I've learned and what I've kind of read up on is this is not intended to catch on fire my char cloth that I'm attempting to make in here. What I'm going to do is I've got a little corn roaster, happy 4th of July, and I'm going to poke a single pin sized hole in the top of here. Nothing more than an eighth of an inch. This is just to allow gases to escape. We do not want oxygen to enter the inside of this tin. If not, it will ignite the cloth. And then you gotta start all over. So let's start by just poking one hole in the top like that. Can you see that? It's right there. It's just a single little hole right there in the top. Okay, so before we start our little camp stove here, because <clears throat> that's all we got working with, key ticket to this is if you're gonna do it this way, make sure to have gloves because this thing we want to cook like that for about five to ten minutes on one side and what we're looking for is steam smoke to come out of that little hole at the top all right after you feel as though it's good maybe five minutes seven minutes whoever we're going to flip this thing over so i need gloves and we're going to cook the other side of that cloth until you stop seeing smoke when the smoke stops the cook is over if you overcook it then you got problems you're going to have to start all over again all right, so we don't want a huge flame, remember. Let's just get that on there. So we got some heat. Now there is a little bit of a breeze coming through here. Let's give it a shot. Go ahead and put our tin on there. What we're looking for is the thing to heat up and the gases to escape out the top with the smoke. That's what we're looking for. We don't want oxygen to come rushing inside of this thing because it'll end up igniting the cloth. Look. Look at the smoke. I'm gonna turn that down just a little bit. A little tiny bit. It is the gas is escaping. We don't want anything else to happen here. So I'm gonna give this just a little bit of time. You can smell that. I don't want it on fire. It's on very, very low. Once that smoke stops, you need to turn it off. And then we're gonna plug that hole with a toothpick. All right, we still got some smoke coming out. Actually, when you use a larger tin like this, instead of flipping it over the tin, I'm realizing that it's better to just take and flip the cloth over and leave it in this position. I don't see any more smoke happening coming out of here, so I think it's time for us to take a look. Turn off the heat. And I'm going to stuff. Let me get a glove on here so I don't burn myself. I'm going to stuff that hole right there quickly with a toothpick, just like that. So we don't get anything inside of there. I'm going to take this off here, set it over the side, and we're going to let it sit there and cool off. And then we're going to open up that tin and see how it came out. All right, so we've let this cool off. I flipped it inside of there and the smoke stopped. Now I can tell you one thing. Um, I'm pretty sure it would happen if you don't pull this thing off within 30 seconds uh, after seeing the smoke stop the lids probably gonna blow off there on you and it's probably gonna burn up the char cloth so be careful be ready like I said I had this toothpick sitting in that hole until I figured it was cool enough I don't want oxygen going in there and starting off my deal so let's go ahead and open this thing up and see what we got look at that can you see that? A nice piece of char cloth. Now we're going to take our little Altoids tin and we're going to go ahead and we're going to place it down in there. It's almost velvety to the touch. There's nothing on my fingers. All we did is just burn those chemicals and stuff off there. Made it so it's almost transparent. If you can see that or not. Almost transparent. This on another video, I will show you how you can use a, a ferro rod. I don't have any flint or steel, but we'll try a ferro rod because these things don't catch fire. It's by a spark. 
why you see a lot of guys do flint and steel and stuff. Uh, maybe one day I'll invest and get one or one of my uh, viewers or friends to send me a flint steel kit. But that's how you make char cloth on a camp stove. Now it's in my Altoids kit, ready to go. Hey, that's all the time we got for this one. Always have a great time coming out here to this camera and trail shelter. I mean, here's fireworks going off, people celebrating earlier and stuff like that. Listen, that's the first time I've ever tried making char cloth, and it actually came out perfect. Uh, you can make them in bigger or smaller. You don't want to overpack your tin. Like I said, the most popular way of doing this is in an Altoids can and um, on some coals, really. Uh, but this is all we had to work with today was our little camp stove. And um, I used a larger tin. You saw me prick a single hole in the top of that to let the gases escape. It doesn't take long, trust me. And always use 100% plant-based material when you do this, such as terry cloth, denim venom's a little bit thicker and stuff like that it'll still work uh, also uh, whatever else you can think of no acrylics no polyesters none of that stuff uh, and make sure it's hundred percent plant-based such as hundred percent cotton t-shirt as you saw me use thanks so much for hanging out with me I'll see you all on the next adventure have a great happy 4th of July take care time to get my butt up on out of these woods before I roast like a wiener <laughs>